Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Ferris Bueller's Day Off is a 1986 American teen comedy film that was written, co-produced, and directed by John Hughes. The film stars Matthew Broderick, Mia Sarah, and Alan Ruck, with supporting roles from Jennifer Grey, Jeffrey Jones, Cindy Pickett, Edie McClurg, Lyman Ward, and Charlie Sheen. The storyline goes that having devised an ingenious plan to skip school, popular high school senior Ferris Bueller can't wait to put it into motion and share it with his lovely girlfriend Sloan and his neurotic best friend Cameron as they tag along, creating an exciting, no-holes-barred adventure throughout Chicago. But there are so many ways that this can go wrong. The reckless Bueller now plays with fire. For instance, Ferris's vindictive sister Jeannie knows her little brother is up to no good. And is, if that weren't enough, Ferris's ridiculed dean of students, Ed Rooney, already smells a rat. And he's determined to make this chronic truant remember his name for the rest of his life. But first, Rooney has to catch Ferris in the act. While facing a looming 1980s writer strike, John Hughes went to Paramount executive Ned Tannen with a one-sentence pitch for a movie. He said, I want to do a movie about a kid who takes a day off from school, and that's all I know so far. Hughes sat down and wrote the script within six days, and the result of that was Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which was released on June 11, 1986. Filming began in Chicago in September of 1985, and finished in November, featuring many of Chicago's landmarks, including the Sears Tower, Wrigley Field, the Art Institute of Chicago, and basically Hughes called this movie a love letter to Chicago. He really wanted to capture as much of Chicago as he could, not just in the architecture and landscape, but the spirit of the town itself. As Hughes was writing the film in 1985, he kept track of his progress in a spiral-bound logbook. During this short writing process, he continued to talk to Paramount executive Ned Tannen, who became more and more intrigued with this project. But he was wary that the Writers Guild of America was just hours away from picketing the studio. So this put Hughes into high gear, pressuring him into writing the screenplay in less than a week. He almost went into a trance-like concentration during his script writing process. He worked for hours on end and would later shoot the film on essentially what was his first draft of the script. The first cut of the movie ended up at two hours and 45 minutes long. The shortening of the script had to come in the cutting room. Hughes intended to focus more on the characters in the film rather than the plot. He knew from the start how the movie would begin, and he knew how it would end, and he didn't know the rest at all. He just filled in the spaces. He felt that it wasn't about the events, but it was about the characters in those events, and he did whatever he could to make those characters as full and real as he could. Edward McNally was rumored as the inspiration for the character of Ferris Bueller. McNally grew up on the same street as Hughes did, and he had a best friend named Bueller, spelled slightly differently. But nevertheless, this youngster relentlessly was pursued by the school dean of truancy, which totaled up to be about 27 days of absence during his senior year. Compared to Bueller's meager nine days in this film, John Hughes said the whole time he was writing the film that he had Matthew Broderick in mind, thinking that he was the only actor who could pull off this role, calling him really clever and charming. 
But Anthony Michael Hall had worked on numerous projects with Hughes and eventually was offered the role, but he turned it down because he was busy with other projects. He also looked at quite a few others like Jim Carrey, John Cusack, and Johnny Depp, and even George Clooney for the role. But he had to go back to his first thought process while writing and sign Broderick for this role. Mia Sarah surprised Hughes when she auditioned for the role of Sloane Peterson. He didn't at the time know how old she was. He said that he wanted an older girl to play a 17-year-old. He wanted someone older so that it would give her the type of dignity that she needed. He almost fell out of his chair when she told him that she was only 18. Molly Ringwall was also up for the role, but Hughes decided not to let her do it. He didn't feel like the part was big enough for her. Alan Ruck had auditioned for the role of Bender in The Breakfast Club that finally went to Judd Nelson. But Hughes remembered him and decided on casting him as 17-year-old Cameron Fry. Hughes based that character of Cameron on a friend of his from high school. He was sort of a lost person. His family kind of neglected him, so he took that as license to really pamper himself. Emilio Estevez turned this role down, and because of that, Ruck got the part. He says that every time he sees Emilio, he wants to give him a big kiss and tell him thank you. At the time, he was 29 years old, and he was concerned about the age difference. As a matter of fact, Ruck was only six years younger than director Hughes. But there was some chemistry there to start with. Ruck and Broderick had previously acted together in the Broadway production of Biloxi Blues. Ben Stein's lecture was all completely improvised. He was really supposed to be doing it completely off camera. But the student extras that they had for that filming day laughed so hard when they heard his voice that Hughes decided to do it on camera and told him to improvise the entire thing to talk about something that he knew a lot about. Now, back in 2020, Jennifer Grey ended up releasing some throwback photos of her and her co-stars while they were making the film. The most shocking one of all is of Grey kissing Mia Sarah in between takes. I tried to find out what the real story on this is. I think it was just a production stunt that was never to see the light of day. But it sure raises your eyebrows nowadays. Go back and watch this really funny film. John Hughes has a real way of catching your attention. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.